So just uh, briefly, we have a word in our gospel today which appears twice, which of course you all recognize and noticed. It's not the word the, because that doesn't count. Uh, the word authority. Okay, the word authority appears. Uh, he made it, his teaching made a deep impression on them because he spoke with authority. Then at the end, it says, um, what teaching? He gives orders unclean spirits with authority and power. And they come out. Authority. The, the word authority is not so popular in Catholic circles anymore because uh, it's often associated with a, a kind of a negativity, a kind of a dominion, a kind of a looking down on others. Okay? But... As I say, like it's actually mentioned in the gospel twice as Jesus having authority, and this is a good thing. That the people are impressed because he has authority. So, so just we have to get we have to clarify two details as regards authority. So the first one, authority. What does authority mean? The Latin word, and we all love this, you know, the bit of etymology. But the Latin word of, of of authority, right? It comes from the word author, octor in Latin, uh, meaning author. Author. So your authority comes as such from your authorship. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, we have a chicken coop down there. Chickens, right? And we have a gardener who every day feeds the, those chickens. Even on his days off, he comes in, he feeds them chickens twice a day. And if they have any of them chicken fleas, things that you get, and they need that kind of white powdery stuff, he'll put it on them. And if the fence is in any way broken, he'll repair it. So he's protecting them from the foxes, protecting them from fleas, providing food every day. If there's any sort of a threat or a danger, if there isn't enough running water, he will sort it, right? Now, you can imagine the chickens at some point saying, dear gardener person, we don't need you. Now, you'd look on and say, have you any idea what he is doing for you every day, right? Because if you, if you, if the chickens were at any point to kind of stage a mutiny <clears throat> and, and block Bohush from coming in, you know, to assume their authority, assume their independence, and say, we don't need you. You have absolutely no idea what you're doing in saying that. You have no way of providing for yourself. If a fo fox comes, yeah helpless. You'll make a, a ton of noise and scream as the inevitable happens. <laughs> right? And that's it. Right? So kind of whereas Boaz is he's like the, 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 the gardener <clears throat> is the author of, of their lives. Right? He's creating, if you will, this safe environment for them. So is it right and fitting that Boaz would say, well, I, to be honest, I think I have a kind of a certain amount of authority here. It's, it's, only, it's, it's completely logical. Obviously, I mean, I know it's a ridiculous example, but, you know, you, you scale it up a bit. And you have the world here with us, you know. And everything is held in existence by God. And then, at a certain stage, when we get, like, super intelligent, you know, when we hit 18, 19, right? And we're like, we know it all. God, no thanks. I'll take care of it from here. <laughs> you know nothing. No offense. But like you, you don't. Like you've control over nothing. Nothing. Like, well, this tiny little portion of, 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 of time and space you can kind of control. You can't even control the state of your bedroom. Never, never mind, you know, actually, actual important things. Okay? So... This idea of, of authority. It, authority, it's, not, it's not, not to do with dominion or anything like that. But if God is our author, if he wrote us into existence, then, then yes, he does have a certain say about how things go. You'd never say to J.K. Rowling or, or Roald Dahl or Shakespeare, oh, sorry, I don't like that bit. Ch I'm changing that bit of your book. I don't, I'm just going to rewrite it. That's, you, you can't. You're not the author. You, you can't do that. You know, it's, it's not your say. So when, when Jesus preaches, his authority obviously ultimately stems from the fact that, that he wrote all these people and everything else into existence. So yes, he deserves a say, at least a say, in how things go. He created them. Okay, second detail. So firstly, the first detail is uh, authority comes from the fact that we in some way are an, are an author, like a founder in a community as well. They should have a say as to how the community is run because they, God through them 
brought this community into existence. So a family, you know, the parents bring the kids into existence. So yes, they do have a certain amount of authority as to how things should go. If you own something, then yes, you have a certain amount of authority as to how that thing is used. It's completely common sense. Okay. Second detail. Uh, not just that we're kind of authors of certain things, and to keep that in mind also as regards God, but the Lord's authority does not come from the fact that he was smart, as I'm sure Jesus was, as he was eloquent, as I'm sure he was. Authority doesn't just come from brains, because you can use brains to manipulate. You can be, kind of, you can be persuasive, but wrong. If you look at, like, there are plenty of fanatical groups out there who have very persuasive speech and very radical followers, but ultimately the, the, their ideas are wrong. You know, if you look at communism or things like that, like very, very compelling uh, speakers, but, but their, their ideas lead to, lead to pain, lead to hurt. So Jesus' authority comes from the fact that, that he loves them. So in God's mind, authority and love are always bound together. Authority and love. So lo authority then doesn't just come from the fact that you're bigger or you're older or you're stronger or you're taller or you're paid more. The authority comes from, from the fact that you, you love those entrusted to you. In some strange kind of a way, our gardener loves the chickens, provides for them every day. God's love Loving authority is what holds us in existence. When God speaks to people, when the Lord preaches to people, he does so out of love for them. When he casts devils out, it's, it's authority. Yes, it's an authority of love, though. Because he loves the possessed person. He casts out the devil. So, authority isn't dominion. Authority ultimately is, is love and and love shows itself in service. So, as we think of the church today as well, let us not think that the, the, the problem is the fact that <clears throat> priests or bishops, whoever it is, have authority. That's not the problem. Because you take authority away and then you've got no leadership. You've got no leadership, you've got chaos. Everyone doing their own thing. And to be honest, it'll, it'll be a divergent chaos where all different ideas and all different uh, mentalities and agendas will start pulling different directions and you end up with just an absolute mess. The problem isn't authority, but authority has to be used correctly. Authority is rooted in love. Authority <coughs> is rooted in this, this such God-given responsibility for people, uh, which we must live uh, out, of, out of love also for God. And authority, as leadership would be another homily, but leadership or authority can often be kind of lonely because it's your head on the block if anything goes wrong. And if anything goes right, as a leader, you're supposed to be praising the ones who kind of on the ground did the work. So it can be, leadership can be lonely, authority can be lonely. Uh, but ultimately it's, it's loving service of God. So we ask the good Lord today to help renew the little authority that we have for our various circles of influence, uh, but also to renew this like, positive sense, positive understanding of authority within the church. That we might not think that by doing away with all authority, somehow things will be freer or better. The Lord establishes the church with authority. So may we be faithful to him in carrying it out with love. Amen. Amen.